Well, I'm here again today with Dwayne Perdue, who has another story to tell about uh, the Western states. Uh, personal experience that uh, I understand uh, you decided to become a runner. <laughs> what, what triggered that? And, and let's just talk about that. Well, that was a, that was a surprise to me. But uh, the, the first year that I, I worked the, the Western States 100 uh, was on motorcycles. And we swept the trail from one location to another, my, my team and I did. And um, when, uh, when we were done in the morning, we loaded up and headed on back. All of us had our share of fatigue and things. We'd worked all night and I, I just had to shake my head thinking I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed to be tired working on, on an event where these people have been running almost 100 miles. And um, on the way back in, I stopped on the, on the highway climbing the grade and I got out and looked over the looked over the canyon side there down to No Hens Bridge and I, I saw a couple of the runners coming through that were the, the, the tail end of the runners but still going through. I looked down and, and shook my head and, and thought about all of the motorcycle racing that I had done and, and, and that kind of racing was billed at that time as being the second most difficult uh, in a uh, physically demanding event uh, that you can do. And I thought it, it, it's nothing compared to what these people are doing. And uh, I just shook my head and got back into this truck and, and I heard a voice. And that voice said, you're going to run this. <laughs> <laughs> I said, there's no, I argued with that voice the rest of the way home. But it was, it was a definite voice that, that uh, planted itself in my heart. So what was your first step in preparing? Well, that was a challenge, John, because I was classified by the doctors as being a severe asthmatic. Um, there were times when I, I because of the asthma, I, I couldn't get up and walk across the room to change the TV set. I just couldn't do it. And... Uh, to, to hear a voice like that, it was a, that was a big step from where I was at. Mm -hmm. But uh, I thought the only thing I can do is to get out and start moving around and maybe walk or jog a little bit. Well, I wasn't going to do that with my wife there. I didn't want to put her through seeing me go, putting myself into that. So a few weeks later, she went down to visit her mother. And uh, she'd be gone for a couple of weeks. And I said, oh, yeah, this is the time to either put up or shut up. So I put on some tennis shoes and uh, went out the door and just up about a half a block is a stop sign and you make a right. Go down another block is another stop sign. And I set those as my goals. And I, 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 I jogged, walked to the first stop sign and that snake wrapped itself around my <laughs> chest. And, I said, oh, my, my, my. And uh, I, I set the second stop sign as a goal. And as it got closer, I looked at it, and I counted the steps that it would take to get there. Mm -hmm. And I counted each step. And but I, I made it to the stop sign. Mm -hmm. But I went down to my knees there, and I was there for probably 10 minutes or more trying to catch my breath. Recovering, okay. Yeah, it was a tough first run. Jog, walk. Mm-hmm. And uh, I made it back to the house and uh, had to think a lot about whether I was going to do that again. But the next day I went out and did it again. And the next, and the next. And I did that for about uh, 10 days. And just shortly after that, I got to the stop sign and I went around the corner and I went another 100 yards down. And I said, I got this. I'm going to beat this. So I started running, and uh, it was a lot of running and a lot of walking, and then back just slow running. I wouldn't say running, it was jogging, mm -hmm. it was slow mm -hmm. run. But I did that until I worked up to about a mile and a half, and I thought, well, I've accomplished something. And my asthma started going away. Interesting. Yes, it did. I was happy about that. And uh, 
So then I just push that goal out a little further and a little further and uh, set a goal for five miles. And one day I got that five miler in. Now, how far along the timeline are we here? Is this months of effort? Oh, it was months and a lot of, um, a, a, a lot of drive. It, it was not a comfortable few months, John, mm -hmm. but I worked my way through it. Uh, uh, and not because I was any more special than anybody else who has asthma. Mm -hmm. I was just determined. I had that voice. Yeah. So I was listening to that. So I was going to work my way through it. And, and I, I did uh, until I got where I was doing 12, 15 miles at a time. That's nothing compared to what these athletes do. But it was a lot to me. Oh, yes. And it was about, I guess I was about a year it took me to do that. And uh, and one day I got a knock on the door. Knock, knock, knock. And... Uh, when I opened it, there was a fellow standing out there and said, I understand you're a runner. And I said, you understand incorrectly. <laughs> and he said, you're interested in running Western states? And I said, yeah, I am. He said, well, I've run it several times. Would you like to run with me? So I started running with him and he taught me a world of things about the Western states event. There's a lot of strategy that goes into running an event like that. And a lot of things that you need to put your body through and be prepared to put it through. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he taught me those things. And we ran both Natime. Do you recall his name? Rex Maynard. Rex Maynard, Rex right. Rex Maynard, yes. He lived about uh, five doors up from me and I didn't know it until he came. And I don't know how he got to know to come down and knock on my door. It could have been a pity knock, I don't know. <laughs> but he did, and I was very thankful to Rex. I learned a lot. And then I, I, I got introduced to some other Western States runners, uh, including Jim Howard, who won it. And uh, I ran with him for, well, I ran behind him mm -hmm. uh, for a while doing some training runs. But, uh, I was, so how much time passed before you actually got out and, and ran the, well, the 100? The, yeah. the getting out and running was uh, about three years later. Mm -hmm. I ran from Auburn to Colfax. And uh, that was my first long run. Mm -hmm. And uh, about three or four months later, I ran from Auburn to Forest Hill. And I said, I... I I'm, I'm going to beat this. Mm -hmm. I, I, was, I was winning against the asthma, and now I'm headed for this. But uh, there was a lot of skepticism, self-skepticism. Uh, at, at the time that I was training, this was back in the 80s, early 80s, I, uh, there were only, if memory serves me correctly, I hope I'm not wrong on this, but there was only 2,000 of the best ultra long distance runners in the world had finished this event in under 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And that was what I was looking at. That was your goal. Oh, I, I didn't even think of the 30 hour mark. Mm -hmm. It never entered my mind. Yeah. Don't ask me why, but that was my focus. Once you did it, did you ever do it again? No. Or that was the... No. Um, I, I would like to have, and it was uh, other runners that asked me to go out, but running an event like that, John, uh, is, is not just dedication from the runner. It's a lot of dedication that has to come from your family. Mm -hmm. it, because you're, you're, you're doing things that they're not, and you're not doing things that they'd like you I to. I see that, yeah. And... Uh, so I missed my family for six years. That's how long it took me to, to train for this. Well, inspirational story. I think a lot of people need to see this and know what you can do. I mean, the idea of starting, I'll get to the end of the block, uh, that was and where then I'll get to 100 miles. I mean, but see, the important thing, John, is that I don't, I look at those 
runners like like heroes. They are to me. Mm -hmm. I don't put myself in that category. I just don't. There's nothing special about me other than I was just dedicated to do this. And I wasn't going to lose. Well, if you can inspire others in this video to do what you did, then there's something special about you. Oh, well, well thank you. And I hope it inspires somebody to, to get up and do something that they'd like to do and are a little bit afraid that they can't. Exactly. Yes, you can. Yes, Thanks you again, Dwayne. Thank you. You're welcome.